Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I've done this super gorgeous like summery like vibrant makeup look. I go super in depth on how to create such a perfect blend of eyeshadows especially with color it's very hard to blend them together. So I go, I go really in depth on how to create a perfect blended eyeshadow look if you guys want to you know, stay tuned for that. I'll leave the time down below because I do do a full face today. So if you guys just want to see how I do perfect eyeshadow, then I'll leave the time link down below for you guys to just skip to. Otherwise, otherwise you can just watch me do my whole face. So I'm giving you guys two options. <laughs> so this is a chit chat tutorial. I go do my whole face, like I said. It's nice and glowy and like bronzy and like all that good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy today's look. If you want to see how I got it, then please stay watching. And before I forget, Make sure to subscribe down below, guys, so you can keep up to date with my tutorials. And if you guys do enjoy this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up for me so I, got, so I know and I can do more tutorials like this one. I'll have an awesome day, guys, and I'll see you soon. Mwah. Bye. Hey, guys. So I've already done my brows. I was thinking I'll do the skin first and then we can move on to the fun part, which is the eyes. So I'm first going to prime my face with my Urban Decay Self-Adjusting Complexion Primer. This is so good because it basically cancels out any redness or scarring any blurs or your pores and everything like that it's so good to neutralize the base so you have a nice flawless base for your makeup to sit on top of for foundation i'm going to mix two together i'm going to go in with my matte and poreless fit me foundation in the shade 122 creamy beige and mix it with my covergirl ready set gorgeous foundation in the shade 210 medium me medium beige these two together like make my perfect um color because the moment I'm not like quite medium beige yet like oh no I'm just in between so I'm gonna mix these two together so I know I used to say that the matte and poreless um Maybelline foundation used to make me break out and they did they used to make me break out so bad my skin would react so badly but since I've been going on this like um you know healing skin path where I've started taking skin shot and everything my skin isn't reacting to it anymore. Like, it's not so sensitive. It's so good. Which reminds me, because I know you guys have wanted me to do a skin update. And I really will be doing posting one soon. Like, in the next week or so. So, keep an eye out for that. I do hear you guys in the comments. I know you want a skin update. And I would gladly give one to you. So, keep an eye out for it. It'll be coming out in the next next week or so. Oh, I'm so excited. Next I'm taking my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the shade Medium Moyen, so medium beige basically, and placing this around my eye area to conceal the feels. <laughs> Just place it on any like acne scars I might have that might be showing through but this foundation's like these two foundations are pretty good. There's not really much showing through which is good. I'm going in with my Sigma Tapered Kabuki F86 brush to blend out the concealer. Something new today. <laughs> Girl, I haven't used this brush in literally like a year or so. And holy crap, I forgot how freaking good it was to blend out concealer. And I'll do my usual technique where I just feather out the edges of the concealer around those scars or break out whatever it is. So next I'm going my Master Strobing Liquid from Maybelline. I know I've been using this in the last couple videos, but girl, I'm like in love with this glowy skin it's been giving me. And I'm just going to be applying this with a damp beauty sponge. And it doesn't give me like that oily look. Like I wore it all last night when I went out to a dinner with some friends. And it literally didn't make me look greasy or oily or anything like that. It just gave me that gorgeous glow. Because I've already got the Matte and Poreless foundation on. So I'm not going to get that oiliness seeping through. And then I can just use the controlled glow with the highlight strobing stuff. And I'll do a little bit on my chin too. And then I'm just going to place some on my body as well. Next to set the concealer in place, I'm going to go in with my Eclipse Blur Powder in the shade 21. And place this on with a dry beauty sponge. And just kind of like press it into the skin. We always make sure to bring it on 
upward motion to the hairline so it lifts the face with like it's like a subtle lift and highlight to the face as well as setting and blurring out the pores. Did I just go and set everything in place with a setting spray? Oh, it's like my favourite part of doing my face is getting to refresh it with a setting spray. So I'm going to move into the eyes really quick. It's going to be such a fun look. I'm so excited. So first of all, I'm priming my lids with my NYX Jumbo Pencil and Milk. And just kind of creating a nice blank canvas for the eyeshadows that, we, that we'll be applying on top. Because they are quite colourful. So I want a white canvas underneath. So that they really stand out. And I'm just setting that in place with White Lies from Makeup Geek as well. I'm also just setting the crease area and the whole like little um, brow. Just because that's where it can tend to crease. And it's going to help the eyeshadows blend into one another a lot more smoother. Next, taking Wisteria, this gorgeous like mauvey shade on a fluffy crease brush from Zueva. And I'm just whacking this through the crease. I think I might blow it out a bit today, like really blow it out towards the tail of the brow and just kind of connect it to the corner of the eye. So to create really seamless eyeshadow looks, it's best to start off with a super fluffy brush so that you can really buff it out so there's no like harshness or heavy pigmentation. It's just a light application in a more um, diverse area because there's no really point to the brush. It's just fluffy. It's just going to lightly disperse that product pretty evenly across the area. Next I'm taking Poison Plum on a petite crease from Zueva. This is a more dome shaped brush so it's going to place the product in a specific area in the crease. Because it has a tip to it, you can focus it in a specific area. So I'm going to place Poison Plum through my crease starting from the outer corner and working it in. It's a couple shades darker than like the previous shade. So as you do your eyeshadows, you want to always use create a gradient effect. So you always use the lighter shade um, and the highest point, so right under the brow. Then you go into a deeper shade, deeper shade, deeper shade. And the more shadows you use, the more seamless it becomes because you've got that gradient effect. So like I said, focus on the outer point of the eye and work inwards about two thirds of the way across. So like I said with the shadows, we work from lightest to darkest. With brushes, we work from fluffiest to more like pointed petite brushes. Because the bigger the brush, the softer the application. And the more defined and like pointed the brush is, the more specific and pigmented the application. So as we work downwards, we get more pigmented and darker. So you want to start light and work downwards. So that's why we start fluffy and work into a more petite brush. And taking Wisteria again on that fluffy crease brush, we're just going to soften the edges up of Poison Plum. You don't want to go too crazy heavy handed in this upper portion here because then it just looks too like like crazy and like you're being punched in the face. We want to always try and keep it just below the brow so on top of that harsh line I'm just softening it up. And do you just see the difference from this side to this side? It's just soft and smoked out and mm mm mm. Next, taking Poison Plum on a petite crease brush again, I'm just going to deepen up the purple. So I know I'm going back and forth between the shadows a few times, but that's just how you're going to create that seamless blend is by applying a little bit more, blending it out, apply a bit more, blend it out. It's just a constant dance between the two. And again, take Wisteria and just soften those edges super slightly, like very lightly. Next, on a gloss professional eye pencil brush, I'm going to take Neptune from Makeup Geek and place this right through the lower crease area. It's a gorgeous matte royal blue eyeshadow. And I'm just applying a little bit at a time through the crease. See, it's still kind of on the lid area. It's the lower half of the crease, so you can still kind of see it when I open my eye. But what I didn't say before, guys, is you want to make sure that in the crease area you have a matte or a couple matte shades. You don't want shimmers in the crease. So instead of blowing this blue out like I did with the purple, I'm actually focusing it on the actual lid area. It's like the ball of my eye, so it's more rounded, this part. You guys can just see like how pigmented 
using your pencil brush makes the eyeshadow because it's focusing it in a really specific area. So it's just super focused and like pigmented and boom, bright. Taking Poison Plum again on that petite, pe petite crease brush and just going to softly buff out any harsh lines and bring some of that deep purple back. Kind of buff it out towards the tail of the brow. And like I said, it's like a dance between the two eyeshadows or like the few eyeshadows that you're using. You just go back and forth and apply where you need to, blend where you need to kind of thing. Next, I'm taking this absolutely stunning like shimmery eyeshadow from Morphe in the shade Sapphire. Oh, it just reminds me of like an ocean blue. It's so beautiful. And I'm packing this on with a Morphe MB16 chisel shader brush. This is such a good brush because the bristles are nice and close together. So they're really good to like pack on a lot of pigment in a specific area. So you don't want to use a blender brush now, you want to use a brush that's quite compact. And we're going to do that dance again between those eyeshadows. So just placing Neptune back through the crease to soften those lines up. And Poison Plum. And then Wisteria to finish off the blend. Because I want like a pop of like a light blue shade, I'm going to take Pegasus from Makeup Geek and pop this right in the center for that gorgeous like pop of like, I don't know, like light blue. So you guys can go in with that same Morphe brush, but I'm going to take this um, Morphe M326 brush, it's just a bit more petita, and pack on that shadow. Oh, guys, these Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadows, I swear, are the most amazing things on earth. So, pack on Sapphire and just kind of press it and drag it to blend it. I just kind of drag it on the top too to soften it. So, it's more like a subtle pop rather than like, boom, girl. <laughs> I'm barely touching the brush to my lid, so it's really soft swiping motions. Bit of Neptune, Poison Plum, and Wisteria. And there you go, you've got your perfect gradient blend, like blended eyeshadow, that's how you create the perfect blend. So let's move on to, I think, lashes and mascara. So the lashes I went in today with are the Ardell Demi Wispies and I just don't want anything too crazy like voluminous and like like really thick and you know all that kind of stuff because I wanted the eyeshadow to poke through so I just went with something that would just kind of give a bit more a little bit more volume and you know fullness to the lashes. So next I'm going to grab a black eye coal. This one's from Makeup Geek. It's in the shade obsidian and I'm placing this on my tight line and I'm placing a nude coal on my waterline. So the black's going to really make the lash line look more full and the nude's just going to make the waterline look more awake and fresh. Next taking Wisteria on a Zoeva pencil brush I'm going to buff this under the lash line and making sure to connect it to the top. Then grabbing that petite crease brush, make sure you wipe it off so it's nice and clean and just buff out the edges of that wisteria. Then taking Poison Plum again and I'm just going to whack this really tightly against my lash line with my Morphe M326 brush. And I'm keeping it to my outer corner of my eye and connecting it up to the top lash line as well. And then grab wisteria again and buff it out. For bottom lashes, I'm going in with this super, extra super lash bl electric blue mascara from Rimmel. To finish off this eye look, I'm going to use a matte white eyeshadow. This is the one from Makeup Geek in the shade White Lies. And I'm placing this as an inner corner and brow bone highlight. If you guys did bring your eyeshadow up too high on the brow, then you can always use the brow bone highlight to kind of soften it up and blend it down a bit further so it's not so high up. You guys can feel free to do a shimmer in a corner and brow bone highlight. I just kept it matte because I've got a lot of stray hairs that I don't want to draw attention to so I'm keeping it matte. I actually might even go in with a bit of Ice Queen from Makeup Geek on the inner corner 
not the brow bone. It's got a bit of like a sheen to it, that's why I like this one. And I want a bit of shimmer kind of on the inner corner. Now to continue with the rest of the face. So I want to bronze and contour now. So I'm going to use my Missilin bronzer in the shade Barbados Babe. I love that name. I'm just going to really just kind of bronze the perimeters of my face and also along my nose area. So like along the cheek and nose area a bit just to give it a bit of like a natural warmth to the skin because when you do sit in the sun or you know get a bit of tan going on you get it on the nose area so it kind of makes it a bit more natural looking I guess natural with quotation marks of course <laughs> I also like to kind of bronze up the chin and jawline like I contour with the bronzer powder so I can have a nice defined jawline I just bring whatever's left on the brush down my neck and on my bod a little bit. And I'm grabbing this contour powder from Makeup Geek in the shade Breakup. This is like my new favourite contour powder at the moment. And I'm just going to place this on my Chi Chi bronzer brush and contour my cheekbones. Keeping most of the product focused towards the hairline. And I kind of hug the cheekbone so I curve it round. And of course, contouring my nose. You guys have seen me do this like in every video, so we can just fast forward this part. For cheeks, I'm keeping it pretty simple. I'm just taking Infatuation from Makeup Geek, and I'm placing this with my um, blush contour brush just on the contours of my face. So once I've got my blush on, I think I might do some highlight. So I'm going to do... What do I want to use today? So I'm going to grab my Violet Voss palette and I think I might mix these two shades together. More of this one though because I want a really like beaming highlight. So I'm going to mix Moon Gleam and Star Glow together. And I'm just going in with Moon Gleam on like my nose and Cupid's bow. So the lightest highlight. Look like I've got that milk mo going on. <laughs> You drink a cup of milk and it's like got that moustache. And to finish off the face, I'm going in with my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. For the lips, I think I want something glossy today. Like, I've really been loving the glossy lip lately. So I'm going to first of all go in with this matte lip li liquid lipstick in the shade Clear Message from Zoeva. Next, I'm taking this gorgeous lip gloss in the shade Undressed from Dose of Colors, and I'm placing this right over top to give it that glossy, gorgeous look, that luscious lips. When it like shears it out till it looks so good, I love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. This wraps it up. This is a finished look. I do hope you enjoy it. If you did like it, like I said at the beginning, make sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in my next video. I think I'll do a full one next one. So I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys.